Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk a little bit about autoencoder. So what is this about and how to use it and what is the comparison of autoencoder versus PCA in dimensionality reduction. Okay. So if you haven't heard about it, autoencoder is a type of neural network structure. So you can classify it under both machine learning and deep learning because you usually can see some of the long layers. But the neural the, the neurons is structured in a way that you have an equal input and output neurons, but you have a bottleneck layer in between. And between the input and the bottleneck layer, you have the encoder where it strings down the number of neurons, and then you have the decoder, which actually expands the neurons from the bottleneck layer back to the output. So it's usually possible to fit the same data into both the input and output and try to let the neural network reconstruct the whole thing. And then we only extract the weights within the bottleneck layer as our essential data. So what this actually do is uh, it, it compress the data down into the, the essential things that you only need to look at. So this is very useful for, let's say, uh, denoising. You want to remove all the noise in an image. Very useful. It's also very useful in what we are doing here is called dimensionality reduction. So one of the examples I'm showing here is when you do single cell sequencing, you're sequencing five, seven, ten different types of cell types. So, and the data are just expression level. So without having the knowledge of, you know, which cell is expressing how and how does one cell compare to another, it's very hard to visualize that because you have so many different dimensions. You have many different types of cell and you have many different type of expression. So yes, you can do a heat map and check for hotspot and cluster, but to actually properly plot all of them into two, two dimensions and actually cluster them based on cell type, um, PCA is extremely useful. So PCA is called principal component analysis. So it's how you can actually plot a multi-dimensional data like single cell sequencing into only two to three dimension. Okay, so uh, autoencoder can actually do something similar. So let's say you want to compress your, in this situation, 2048 uh, data point. So in this case, 2048 uh, dimensions into 16 dimension, you can use an autoencoder with this kind of structure. And if you only want two to three dimension, you can string the bottleneck layer down in the middle. Uh, down to two to three different dimensions, which is what I'm going to show in the um, in an example later in R. So you can see this is one of the comparison between how you can use different type of uh, tools to actually cluster the, the expression, sorry, to cluster the cell type into their respective um, uh, clusters. Okay, you can see DRA is the autoencoder in this paper. Uh, PCA is another type of tools. We have ZFAR, size V, source, TSNE, UMAP, and DRA plus TSNE. So there are, there are never there are many different types of tools and there are ways that you can do this um, based on the data set that you have. There's never a correct way. There's never the best way to do it. It depends on what you're looking for. But autoencoder is one of the, the, the really useful one over here. Okay, so um, again, you can go to my GitHub page to download the, the R markdown file as shown as shown on the screen. And most likely that, again, with how fast things are being updated in the in the open source world, it's likely that the the, the code that they look at now might not be the code that actually works. And my computer just frees up. Okay, I'm back. So this is basically a data, uh, an example in R markdown that actually how you could able to um, compare the, the performance between PCA and autoencoder based on two to three uh, different bottleneck, layer, bottleneck neurons. Okay, so um, again, first of all, always input the library that you have. If you have not installed a library, just go to the right top bottom right corner here and press install and type in the data that you that you type in the library name that you want to install and you should install fine and we're using um, a data set called ice so ais so what this essentially is is actually the performance index of 220 different athletes basically what is their fat content what is their bmi what is their gender and what is their height, weight, and the spot that they play. And we try to see if we can cluster them based on the different type of uh, spot that they play, or in this case, try to cluster them based on their 
their gender. Okay, it's not as binary and there's overlap. And yes, we have to encounter for that as well. So you can see, you can take a look at the data frame over here. And this is actually what we call a scree plot. So in PCA, we always run something called a scree plot to check for the elbow. So what this essentially means is that how many dimensions do I need to actually cover the data? So in this case, um, the first dimension will cover about 45% of the data, the representation of the data. Okay, so the second about 20 something, the third one about 15. So essentially means that if I plot this data into three dimension, based, based on my PCI analysis, I should be able to cover about 45 plus 25, that's 70, 70, about 80% of the data should be covered, while the rest of the 20 will get lost in space. Well, you always lost some data in compression. So this is one of them. Okay, so this is just uh, the PCA consumption. And let's look at the result of our PCA, now uh, our PCA clustering. As you can see, we are clustering based on the gender. And you can see there's a clear separation between the two gender uh, upon like, this line. And yes, there's a little bit of overlapping here and there, but you can see that the data are basically um, quite, quite well separated. So this essentially means that we have compressed 11 different dimensions down into three. And if you really want to go for it, you can actually cluster it back down to two. I think it will actually work just fine as well. And you can actually see most of the separation over here and there. Okay, so once we're done, let's go into Keras and how do we code for the neural network layer. Okay, so um, in this case, it's a very similar code that we use in all the past example. You just have the data input, which is here. So that's the number of columns as the input shape. And we have six neurons in the first layer, two in the bottleneck layers. Again, usually autoencoder are symmetrical on the two side. Six go to two, two go to six, and six go to 11 again. So it's 11, six, two, six, 11. So we're trying to get the, the data to go from original data and original data, and we try to compress down into two layers, okay? So you get all this error because you don't have CUDA, just ignore them and look at your summary if it actually matches your expectation. So once you're done, um, compile it we're using the mean square error as a loss function and we use our atom optimizer. No specific reason, just that it's performed better on my, on my side. Okay, so the loss is 0 0.01, that's pretty good. And let's actually have a plot and, and see what happens. So what this um, chunk of code basically means is that we are extracting the weight on the intermediate layer. So in this case, you can see that get layer model bottleneck dot output. So you can actually see that when we reconstruct the when we construct the model summary, you can actually see there's a bottleneck name over here. Okay, I think there might be a lot of birds sounding in the thing <laughs> in the background. Okay, so this is um, very similar to what we actually see just now. We can actually see this, the separation between... Okay, so the separation between the, the two gender over here, you can see all the male is up there, all the female is down here, and the PCA is able to separate them right across the middle line, so very similar to what we, ex what we sorry, this is an autoencoder result. Uh, yeah, I should not call PC1 and PC2 actually. Yeah, it's technically PC1 and PC2. I'll, I'll just call them node 1 and node 2 so that it's less confusing. Oh no, it's renamed PC1 and PC2. Doesn't matter, you get the idea. Uh, so this is actually reconstruct based on the autoencoder. And you can see the result is very similar to PCA. So instead of actually just using it for two neurons in the bottleneck layer, we can also use three neurons in the bottleneck layer. So the whole thing is exactly the same. We just change the two to three over here and we just run the model feed. So again, uh, I'm running it in front of the camera in the real time. So I have reduced my epochs from the original 2000, from the original article that I refer to, down to 50. I do not find the loss to be that much lower but uh, if you do want to run your own auto encoder for the best amount of um, performance, you might want to increase the epoch or change around with the batch size. Okay, so you can see this is the output that we have, and this is the model summary that we have in our in our second neural network. And you can see that this is the separation that we that we have um, output based on the based on the the auto encoder. As you can see again, it's very similar to what we have just now. The separation between the two gender are, are quite nicely done. And yeah, it's pretty well separated. If you, if, you, if 
you want to say that. Okay, so the last one, of course, is to compare the reconstruction error. So the, the best thing about autoencoder is that you only need to store the data in that two node, and then as long as you keep your model, you can reconstruct the data to quite a high accuracy in this case. So the, the other, so this is also what a PCA can do as well. So uh, this chunk of code is trying to um, try a different node in the, in the bottleneck layer and try to see the reconstruction error. So it is only one um, principal component. How, what kind of accuracy can we get when we reconstruct back into 11 dimension? If it's two, how many, three, how many, four, how many? So we're doing here from one to 10, and we try to see that what would be the best um, node number or the best bottleneck layer number to use in this autoencoder. Okay, so it should be finished running in a while. Yeah. Okay, so um, it, it could be due to the low amount of epochs that I'm currently running in my code. Um, the original and the original article says about one to five. The the auto encoder actually performs slightly that better than PCA, and they do not run the rest. But uh, what this essentially tells us is that while PCA is an extremely good tool, it is it has its shortcomings. And auto encoder, even though it's extremely powerful and you have a lot more power to control the parameter in between. It is not all the best in all the situation that you have. So I strongly encourage you to change the epoch maybe to 5,000 and, and run it on your own computer and see what you get. And as well as mess around with the structure of the encoder. So maybe don't use six, maybe use 12, 16, or, or something like that. So you, you can mess around with that and see if you get a better performance out of all. So overall, what, what we have we learned? So autoencoder is a type of tool that can be used for, it's a type of tool that is based on deep learning and neural network that is used um, for um, cleaning up image noise, or you can use it for data compression, or in this case, uh, trying to reduce the dimension of your data set. So even in a research paper, it might not be the best uh, independently by itself, even compared to very primitive and very traditional tool like uh, PCA and TSME. But um, what does some of the paper try to tell us is that if you combine the, the encoder and the TSME, you might actually get a much better separation if you both use both of the tools together. So that is, I think, the conclusion. Um, it's never one tool for what you're doing. Try to go mess around, learn more, and explore more. And I think that will be able to help you to, to learn something more on what to do when, when this situation comes. So that's the end of the video. I want to thank you for watching and remember like, subscribe and leave a comment down below to make to to tell me if I did anything wrong and I usually like to hear that. Okay, see ya, bye.